in the last stream chat, we were working mostly on building the oil pump jack. We do now have 17.4 buckets of oil, and uh, presumably if we throw a little bit of uh, fuel into the old generator there, we should start getting uh, a, a bit more oil, and we should be able to fill up that tank there fairly quickly. And we were also working, of course, on setting up the improved blast furnace and automating the production of steel. So we now have, thankfully, 89 steel ready to go. And the reason that we need so much steel is because if we're going to get into pneumatic craft, a lot of the machines and blocks from pneumatic craft require compressed steel ingots. And as we showed at the end of the last stream, compressed steel ingots are made by blowing up regular steel ingots. And on average, you lose about 20% of your steel ingots in the conversion from steel to compressed steel. So I think in the last stream, we did get a few compressed steel ingots. Yeah, we have 10. And if memory serves me right, I think someone told me we need about 34 if we're going to set up all of the infrastructure required to make plastic, which is what we need if we're going to start getting in to uh, some of the better machines and into some applied energistics too. So in that case, chat, let's try maybe doing like half a stack. Half a stack if we lose 20% means that we're going to end up with approximately 25 or 26 steel ingots, plus the initial 10 should take us to 35 or 36, which I think is fine. I do want to keep a, like a, a decent amount of steel on hand for some other crafts that we might do later on down the line. Um, so for now, all we need to do is craft up one more TNT. And one thing someone did recommend in the last stream is using the tiny TNT here from Applied Energistics 2, uh, because it does require less gunpowder. It does, on the flip side, require nether, uh, nether quads, but now that we do have the... Uh, Conjuring Catalyst, we can duplicate our Nether Quads um, at the cost of a very small amount of mana. And so essentially, chat, all I'm thinking is that if we go ahead and run that through the old uh, Sag Mill there, that should get us two Surtis Quads Dust. We can then craft that up with two Gunpowder, which of course we get from our, uh, our Flint. And we should be pretty much good to go. So two Nether Quads Dust and two Gunpowder gets us one tiny little TNT. And then uh, if we grab that alongside, let's say like a button, I guess, is probably the cheapest... A redstone implementation we can use here and then if we uh, go and throw down half a stack of steel we should hopefully get about 25 or 26 compressed steel ingots here boom boom and boom it worked, nice. So um, I don't know what we were at before, but we now have 37 compressed steel ingots, which should be more than enough to get all of our uh, machines here up and running. So the first thing that we are going to do, chat, is we're going to turn our oil from oil into LPG. So uh, LPG, this stuff here, is made by running the oil through the thermo pneumatic processing. Uh, sorry, it's made by running the oil through the refinery. And as a byproduct, we are going to get diesel as well. For now, we'll store that diesel. Going forward, we could put it into the likes of a compression dynamo. Uh, we could also put it into a combustion generator, a diesel generator. There are all kinds of things that we can do with it. We can even trade it for some emeralds, which we might end up doing later on in today's stream. Um, unfortunately, I think all of these are a little pricey right now. Like in order to get the uh, combustion dynamo, we need a dynamo frame, which requires the industrial machine chassis, which we can't make until we've done all of the stuff with pneumatic craft. So we're going to have to hold off on that for the moment. And also the diesel generator from tech reborn i think is maybe even more expensive and has yet more things that we currently don't have access to like refined steel ingots um you know we need all kinds of stuff that currently we do not have so uh for now we're just gonna store that in a tank and we'll come back to it in the future but uh, to do that we are going to need two refinery blocks i mentioned it a bit in the last stream but uh, depending on how many refineries you stack on top of each other uh, that will determine what resources you get out of your oil um, if you want to be super efficient you can put four down and get some uh, creosine and some gasoline for now though i think we're just going to go with the two and get diesel and lpg so the refineries thankfully are fairly easy to make they require six compressed steel ingots one diamond and two glass so glass two diamonds and then our compressed steel ingots should nice and easily get us to refineries nice those are going to go down for now i think probably how do i want to do this chat i think i'll put them down maybe like here and here we're going to end up with a bit of a janky setup here, chat. But um, essentially, I just kind of want to get down a proof of concept to see if my you know system is going to work. And then we can kind of move some of this stuff around and maybe move it into uh, a building of some description later on down the line. Once we have our oil in the refinery, after that, we want to pump the oil or the LPG through and over into the thermo pneumatic processing plant, which requires yet more compressed steel, some glass, some redstone, 
and a pressure tube. The pressure tube is very easy to make. It is get more compressed steel as well as some glass. So I'm thinking I should probably chat if we have some sand, uh, go and throw that into the old uh, furnace. And it would appear that we do not have any sand. That is fine. We can get some just because it looks like we might need more glass than we currently have. So if we grab some redstone over here, we should now have, I think, pretty much everything. The pressure tubes are also going to be used for some other uh, crafts later on down the line. So making, you know, more than uh, one of them is completely fine. We do not need four processing plants here. One will do is just fine. And then uh, finally, once we have the um, LPG in plastic form, so the LPG is going to get turned into plastic in the thermopneumatic processing plant. Once we have that plastic, we can then run that into the plastic mixer, which is going to allow us to make the uh, the plastic sheets required for all of the pneumatic craft recipes. So the plastic mixer is, once again, you guessed it, yet more steel and yet more glass, all fairly easy once you have the compressed steel. The hardest part is just getting that initial bit of compressed steel up and running. So now, champ, what we need to do is we need to grab some uh, fluid transfer nodes. Right now we have one. We might have to make a few more here. Actually, we are definitely going to have to make uh, a few more here. That is fine. Thankfully, they are rather easy to make. We need a bucket, some stone, and some redstone. There we go. So, now that we have some fluid transfer nodes, chat, we're going to pump the oil from our oil tank over and into the refinery. Like so. We should see that fill up on the left. Now, I believe that that is going to turn into diesel and LPG. I'm fairly certain that these tanks here correspond to the refineries. So I'm fairly certain that diesel is going to come out of the bottom refinery and LPG out the top. So we want to do something like this and like this. For now, like I mentioned, the diesel is just going to go over into a tank and be stored over here somewhere. The LPG, we're going to send into the thermopneumatic processing plant. Now, the way that these machines work is they don't require power, but they do require heat. So you'll see right now it says temperature 19 degrees Celsius, required temperature 100 degrees Celsius. So we need to get this quite a bit hotter if it's going to, uh, to, to work. And the same is also true of the thermopneumatic processing plant here. Uh, this also requires a much higher temperature in order to, uh, to generate plastic. I think if we actually look in JEI here, it might tell us what we need. Yeah, so once again, we need a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So the reason why I'm putting this so low down is because we're going to have a block of lava here that is going to heat up both the refinery and the thermopneumatic processing plant. There are a few ways you can do this. If you look at the heat tab here, and it does say this machine requires or produces heat. Heat can be applied by placing a block next to the generator uh, that generates heat. Think the vortex tube fast but requires power, but also lava, slow and torches very slow. Uh, to cool down a machine, you can remove the heat, etc., etc. So my plan is to put down obsidian, oh sorry, put down lava underneath the um, the refinery here. Now, there is a slight caveat there in that the lava will eventually turn into obsidian if placed under the refinery. But, chat, that shouldn't be too big of an issue. I think we can work around that with a little bit of, uh, of automation. So, um, I do believe in my somewhat open shulker chest here, we should have lava. We do indeed. For now, if I go ahead and uh, make sure this is set to empty, and we put the lava down like that, what we should see is we should see this machine going up in temperature. You'll see its temperature has well exceeded 100 degrees Celsius, and it is now turning that oil into LPG and diesel. The LPG should be headed down here. It is indeed, and this is also um, well above its required temperature, and so should, as soon as we get to 100 millibuckets, begin producing plastic. The plastic is made in uh, 100 millibucket increments. I think it might be the case that 100 millibuckets of LPG equals 1,000 millibuckets of plastic, which is very nice indeed. Uh, let me quickly whip up a, a tank chat. So we can actually store that diesel. Otherwise, our system is going to uh, stop working fairly soon here. The tank shouldn't really be too difficult for us. We have made a few of these so far, and they're not bad whatsoever. We'll throw that down right about there. So that should hold the diesel. It does indeed. And as you'll see, the lava has turned to obsidian. So it's not great. We didn't quite get um, our first bit of plastic there. And of course, by the way, all we're going to do here is we're going to do the exact same thing with a transfer node going up and into the uh, the plastic mixer. I think we'll do it one block over just so we don't connect with these pipes here. Uh, the plastic mixer thankfully does not require any uh, heat, I don't think. It does say heat, but I think you can make plastic maybe at just like room temperature. Yeah, you'll see none of these recipes here have like a, a specified heat. So I'm pretty sure that you don't need heat around the plastic mixer to make these like plastic sheets. So yeah, the obsidian is turning, the lava is turning into obsidian. Let's go ahead and break that. My plan here, chat, is to uh, to utilize 
a few things. First things first, I'm going to put down um, another miner from Extra Utilities 2. Uh, that miner is going to be used to uh, to break the obsidian whenever obsidian is uh, is present. Uh, so once again, the miner there, a pretty easy machine to uh, to make. Does require a dropper, but that's easy enough. We also need uh, three iron and two sticks to make another iron pickaxe, as well as one more resonating redstone crystal, which should just be a little bit of end shard combined up with some redstone. And boom, we have another miner. Nice. Despite the fact that you only use an iron pickaxe to make this, this can indeed mine obsidian. So if we put this down right about here, uh, that will go ahead and uh, collect and break and collect any obsidian that we uh, that we use, and therefore also give us a nice like passive source of uh, obsidian going forward, which is pretty nice. But now my plan going forward here is to uh, set up a system that places down lava automatically into this uh, this space here. Again, we don't need it going forever. Like, it doesn't have to be infinite. Uh, we can, of course, you know, go to the nether, fill up a reservoir with lava, come back, deposit that into a tank, and then let this, you know, work and make, you know, multiple uh, buckets worth of plastic that we can then use. And I think that's going to be fine for now. So to do it, chat, I want to use a add-on mod for integrated dynamics called integrated tunnels because integrated tunnels adds some pretty nifty items. Specifically, we're going to use the world fluid exporter, which allows us to place fluids in the world. And we're also going to go ahead and use the world fluid, uh, not the world fluid, we're also going to go ahead and use the fluid interface, which attaches fluids uh, to the network. With these two items, we should fairly easily uh, be able to automatically place our lava down. We are going to need one more tank, but again, that should not be a, a problem here. We do have, once again, all of the stuff I believe to make it, apart from just a little bit of, uh, of glass, but thankfully we did start smelting that up just a few minutes ago. So now getting another tank should not be too difficult. Good stuff. So let's have a look. To make the fluid interface, it's a pretty easy recipe. It needs one bucket and then some crystallized mineral chunks. Right now we have 12 crystallized mineral chunks. So that is very much so doable. You do get four of these, which is nice. And then the world fluid exporter is a fluid exporter, which does require that fluid interface we just made with an output variable transformer, which requires a piston. So we'll get some stone, some wood, some redstone and some iron that should go and get us everything for the piston and then we should i believe have variables left over from the previous stream we do indeed we'll grab those that's going to allow us to make this output variable transformer although in fact actually chat we should have some of those left over right because we did make those before as well we did indeed so never mind i do not need those might as well save the mineral where we can and then finally, in order to actually make the World Fluid Exporter, we just need one Logic Director. This is made with one diamond, six crystallized chorus chunks, and then two crystallized mineral chunks. So the chorus chunks are made by throwing the popped chorus fruit through a mechanical squeezer. Right now, we do not have any popped chorus fruit. However, I believe we do have... Oh, no, maybe we do have popped chorus fruit. Oh, we totally do. How much do we need? We need... Maybe, like, three, depending on how lucky we get. So if we go and run this through the mineral... Uh, through the mechanical squeezer. You can get these, by the way, just by smelting chorus fruit, so they're not particularly difficult to uh, to come by. I do think we have to take out the resin here, though, first. And so let me actually do, I guess, something like this to hopefully move that, that over, and that should get us more uh, resin in the process. So once that is empty, we can go ahead and put our popped chorus fruit in. That should hopefully... Begin producing these crystallized mineral chunks. Six is all we need. So if we grab those and come back over, we should now, chat, have everything that it takes to make the logic director, and therefore, by extension, the fluid exporter. So we are going to need, once again, some more cabling. And I think we might potentially have some cables left over. We do indeed. So all we're going to do here, chat, is we're going to have a tank, and this tank is going to be where our lava uh, is kept. Our lava is going to go down right here. So I'm going to put a piece, uh, a piece of cobblestone there for the moment and turn off the miner. That's where we're going to put our world fluid exporter, right there. We can then get rid of the cobblestone and attach this up via cable to this tank. So the tank, I think, we're going to put, let's say, right... Uh, I kind of want to put it right here, actually. So let's put the tank right there. The tank is going to hold the lava. So the tank needs the world and uh, the fluid interface so we're gonna put out the fluid interface 
right on the tank. So not there, right there, like that. And then all we have to do is connect those two up with cabling. And now the world fluid exporter is connected to the fluid interface. The fluid interface is going to be where our lava goes, like so. And over here, we have a bunch of options for placing the fluids into the world. Now, you can get quite technical with this, much like we've kind of been doing with our setup over there, where you can work with variables and you can do like, you know, if this equals this, or if this doesn't equal this, then place the lava or don't place the lava or, you know, whatever it is. We could, for example, have um, some kind of reader on the plastic mixer and we could say, if this is full of plastic, don't put the lava down. Um, that wouldn't really help us too much, I don't think, but it would maybe save us a little bit of lava if it still turns to obsidian, even if it's not working. So you can do stuff like that. For now, we're going to go with a very basic system. All we're going to do is take one of our blank variables and put it into place all fluids because this is just a simple boolean which means true or false and as long as there is a variable in here it's going to place any fluid on the network in our case that should do what it should do is just place the lava so essentially all we have here chat is a system that will place any fluid connected via a fluid interface to this world fluid exporter so all we have to do is quickly head on through to the nether grab as much lava as we can put it into the portable tank, and then that lava will be automatically placed down by the fluid exporter. And then when it turns to obsidian, the obsidian breaker will break it, or the miner even will break it, store it internally, and then another bucket of lava will be placed down. Nice. And that should continually produce LPG. All right, and we should just be able to uh, set this to fill mode, and then just grab some lava. Beautiful. And then, as always, we could do a quick slash home. And if we really wanted to, we could then do a quick slash back as well uh, to get back there. There we go. And so, yeah, if we go ahead and turn that back on, this should, I think, chat, work quite nicely. Now, one other factor to bear in mind here is that uh, if we go and we look again at warnings here, it'll say, a machine is poorly insulated. Five of 12 block faces are exposed to the air, which wastes heat, ensuring no neighboring blocks are air blocks to insulate the machine for better performance. So, it's going to look bad, but what you can do to increase the amount of... Uh, of heat being kept in the machine so to effectively increase the temperature which you'll notice right now is hovering around 127 if we cover the remaining faces that don't currently have something attached to them like this and we now look inside you'll see right now there's a tick no problems and the temperature has gone right up to 192 degrees 195 degrees celsius so it looks horrible but it does work. This machine here is uh, is already fully covered on all sides, so this one is already reaching its uh, its kind of optimal temperature there. And uh, the final thing we need to make this work is coal. You need coal at the top in order to turn the LPG into plastic. The recipe right here does show uh, a little bit of coal right there. As of right now, we currently have seven coal. <laughs> However, uh, we did learn in the last stream that we can duplicate this coal uh, using our conjurous catalyst here which is hopefully going to make getting more coal nice and easy for us. Beautiful. And I think we probably do also have more in here as well. We do. Nice. All right. So over here, chat, all we need to do now is uh, throw that down in here. That's going to start making the plastic. That plastic is then going to run on over into the plastic mixer. And we are now ready to start generating plastic. So we uh, actually might need like a bucket of LPG if we want to uh, complete that quest, which is a little awkward, this uh, advancement here. But that's fine. We can always come back to it uh, in the future. So I think, chat, we need to now pivot back to the uh, the pressure chamber. There's a quest here called Pressurized Assembly. It says you need machines to print circuit boards after all. Assembling them in a dust-free environment would be ideal. Craft a pressure chamber wall. So the pressure chamber wall is pretty easy. It's four compressed steel with four stone burnt, both of which shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, so all we need to do, chat, is, uh, is get some stone and throw it into the resonator. Now... One thing that people have been recommending for a while is uh, putting auto smelt onto my pickaxe. My pickaxe does have four modifiers free. And what we can do is if we, I think if we add a firewood part, we can add auto smelting to our pick by default. So I'm thinking I might replace the wooden rod that we currently have with a firewood rod. The idea being that what we can do is we can just put down cobblestone and then mine it with a firewood rod to instantly turn it into stone, as opposed to having to get the cobblestone, put it in the furnace, and wait for it to smelt using our fuel. And so I think that's probably what I'm going to do here. We do already have the uh, end iron ore, 
available. So getting more of that firewood really shouldn't be too difficult here, chat. Of course, all we have to do is throw that into the old mana pool. And then right-click that onto a, um, a Wormwood Plank, right? Nice. We might need two of these to make a, a tool rod. I'm actually not quite sure. Let me go and, uh, and check. Oh, no. One seems to be fine. So you'll see that that does have the auto smelt modifier. And then if we do this and this... That is going to lower our durability a bit, but I think that's okay. It's also going to get rid of the ecological bonus, which right now is giving us kind of a passive um, regeneration on our pickaxe. But given how easy it is to make more end stone, uh, what they call chat, more end stone sharpening kits, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So if we take this and we put down our cobblestone, we can then just break this and get actual stone. And because we have luck, we actually sometimes get more stone back than cobblestone we put down. Now... The, the person that recommended this in the YouTube comments, or the comment I saw, did recommend using a hammer for this, which would definitely make this much better, because you can mine in, uh, in a 3x3 area. As of right now, we don't have a hammer. We could make one, obviously, but uh, for now, I think this is fine. It does make it a lot easier for us to get stone. It also has the added side benefit, of course, chat, of allowing us to uh, kind of skip out on the, uh, the ore processing side of things, because now, if, for example, we go... Uh, over to the iron ore that's down here. When we mine the iron ore, it's going to directly turn into iron ingots. So mining that gave us two iron ingots right out the bat. We didn't have to run it through the mechanical squeezer or the sand mill uh, or the furnace. We can just instantly smelt it down into, uh, into two ingots, which is super nice. And it's going to make our mining uh, just that much more efficient going forward as well, which is very nice indeed. And hopefully as well, we're hopefully going to be fairly close actually uh, to getting the excavator modifier, at which point uh, the hammer kind of becomes obsolete because at that point we can put down as much cobblestone as we like and then just vein mine it all uh, or excavate it all using that ore excavator uh, to get a ton of stone. So a little bit of stone burnt later. We should now have what it takes at least to make one set of uh, pressure chamber wall. I'm going to make another one because I'm fairly certain we need at least 16, possibly more, because the pressure chamber chat is a, a three by three multi-block from Pneumaticraft. So if memory serves me right, we do have to have essentially a full three by three, much like the blast furnace and the coke oven, uh, but with the center block empty. And in order to actually form the multi-block, I'm also fairly certain we need at least one of these guys, the um, pressure chamber interface. Oh no, we need at least one pressure chamber valve in order to actually make the multi-block. Uh, the pressure chamber interface just makes the uh, the multi-block easier to use. So the interface is, you guessed it, compressed iron, but this time with a pressure tube. And we actually are out of compressed iron, so we are going to have to make some more. Um, oh no, no, actually we can make it with the pressure chamber wall, I guess. Because we don't need that many valves. And then the pressure chamber interface is a hopper and a wall. Okay, that actually seems very doable. So if we pick up five of these... I do think we are still going to maybe need more uh, compressed steel chat. I think we are pretty close. But uh, for now, if we do one of these, that's going to get, to get us the pressure chamber valve. And then if we uh, grab a uh, hopper real quick, we should be able to make ourselves a pressure chamber uh, interface. Nice. And that's going to be the next advancement taken care of there. Good stuff. Uh, so next, it's time to make a, a pretty clean board, which for those who don't know is definitely what PCB stands for. It says to make a PCB, you've got to start with an empty one. Craft an empty PCB. So uh, we'll come back to that in just a second here. For now, let's grab our stone burn and let's make some more wall here. And yeah, I think we're going to be a little shy. I think we're going to have to get at least three more compressed steel. But the idea, chat is that we have a full 3x3 multi-block here with the pressure chamber valve. I think anywhere in the multi-block will do. For now, I'll put it right there. Um, we do also have, of course, the pressure chamber interface, which for now I'll put down um, right at the top. Actually, we'll come back to the pressure chamber interface chat. For now, let's get enough pressure chamber to fill this in. So if we fill in the missing pieces here, it should form pretty much instantly into the multi-block. It does indeed. You don't need this bit here. So this is our pressure chamber. Now, in order for this to work, we actually do need pressure. And I think if I'm not mistaken, the easiest way for us to get pressure is via 
the use of. I'm looking for it in JEI. I don't see it. This guy right here, the air compressor. So this allows you to turn uh, fuel into pressure. This machine is used to generate compressed air uh, to do this insert solid fuel item that can be burned in a furnace in the fuel slot. Note fuel buckets will not work. Uh, use a liquid compressor for burning liquid fuels. So once again, a furnace, another pressure tube and more steel. This time we should have everything it takes to make that. Uh, the only thing that we're currently missing, I guess, is uh, enough end stone to make a, uh, an end furnace. Beautiful. And boom. And we also do need pressure pipes to actually connect that up, but that should be fine. Uh, for now, I guess we'll go and uh, use wood because we have so much of it and it does work as a fuel source. And I believe all we have to do here is connect this up to the pressure chamber valve and then connect that up to the air compressor. Make sure you do put it down in the right place, otherwise it won't work. There we go. Uh, it does connect on the back here. And this should, if we put fuel in here, begin to up the pressure and therefore up the pressure in here. So... The next quest wants us to make a PCB. The PCB is made in the pressure chamber with one compressed steel ingot and one green plastic. So that leads us nicely back around to the plastic mixer. You'll see on the right, we've got item selection. We want green plastic or yeah, green plastic. Now to make that, we do have to put dyes in on the right hand side here. And I believe even though green plastic is only going to use green dye, I think we do still need to have at least one of each color of dye in there. So the, the three colors being red, blue, and green. Red we have, or blue we have on this, I guess. I think you can use, I don't know if you can use mystical petals, actually. Let me, uh, let me check. I don't think you can. I think you have to use rose red, which is a little less than ideal, but is, uh, is perfectly, oh, we actually don't have any. That makes it a little more dicey. We might have to get some uh, grass down, chat, and do a little bit of uh, bone mealing to try and get some more uh, some more red dye. Uh, we could also use beetroot. That is very true. Um, but right now, we don't have beetroot seeds, but I believe we did have them. Um, like, they're in the crafting chain of getting watermelon seeds. Carrot from potatoes and potatoes from wheat, right? Yeah. So we can run some wheat into, uh, into beetroot, which I guess is probably worthwhile. That's probably a better way of getting red dye going forward rather than trying to uh, to get poppies every time so wheat potato potato carrot carrot beetroot seed and then uh, my real hope here chat is that uh, the beetroot seed works with the watering can if it doesn't this could be uh, a bit of a pain but i'm really really hoping it does so we'll go ahead and i guess we'll do this over we have like a little kind of makeshift farm back here right yeah, I guess we'll put the beetroot seed down like there, and then uh, hopefully increase that growth speed. It works. Nice. Okay, cool. It's not super fast <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but it does work and should any second now get us beetroot. Nice. And for now, we'll just take the one, and then we'll also grab one of our uh, cacti as well, which I think are hiding out in here somewhere. They are indeed. We have nine. That's, of course, going to get us a green dye just as soon as we uh, smelt it. I do actually wonder, chat, if we put this down and break it with our pickaxe, does that auto turn into green dye? No, <laughs> it doesn't. Okay, that would have been nice to know. I was wondering if the, uh, the auto smelt effect worked on cactus. Unfortunately, uh, it does not. Either way, so now we have red blue and green dye chat all we have to do is over in the old plastic mixer drop in the red the blue and the green we'll do one of each for now uh, so you'll see these little bars here are filling up on the left and then if we just click on green plastic it should take i think a thousand millibuckets of liquid plastic and turn it into a green plastic nice and uh, you could lock the selection at which point it would uh, continue making the selection until it ran out of plastic for now we're not going to do that because we don't want to use all of our plastic just yet uh, but that does get us one uh, green plastic chat so now what we should be able to do is we should be able to take and this is actually where um a, a window would be useful so you know what? i might actually go ahead and, uh, and craft that up with a, uh, a piece of glass can i just craft it with one i totally can okay so let me go grab chat one piece of glass the benefit here is it allows you to see inside of 
the chamber, and so you can kind of see when your reaction is uh, is done. So essentially, the uh, the basic unautomated way of doing this is that you uh, you break in through the top or through any side, I guess. Uh, you put in the items required. So in this case, one green plastic and one compressed steel. You then close it back up. You can see our stuff is in there doing its thing. Not going to despawn. Over here, we can then begin to put fuel into the air compressor. I feel like we might as well use charcoal, given that we have so much of it. There we go. That's going to start bringing up the uh, the pressure bar here. And if we look again at the recipe for the PCB, we need the pressure to be about 1.5 bar. So just on the line uh, between green and yellow there is where we need our, our pressure to be. This guy should be able to produce that pressure, I'm pretty sure. You'll see right now his pressure is at 0.2 bars. So it might take him a minute to get up there. Um, and then... Once it gets up to 1.5 bars of pressure, uh, these items should basically just be transformed into the printed circuit board, at which point uh, we can then break the, you know, a block again and take it out. The problem with having to break and replace the blocks every time is that you lose the pressure inside the pressure chamber whenever you break the blocks, right? Uh, that's where the interfaces come in because they allow you to put items in and take items out without having to break the blocks, which means you don't lose the pressure uh, every time you work through a, uh, through a craft. So we're gonna have to use that uh, most certainly going forward but uh, once we have our circuit board chat we do need to take a bit of a detour here you'll notice the, uh, the the advancements kind of circle back around like this and then over to the micro circuit and that's because i believe that if we're going to make a um an unassembled circuit board that we need a light box and the light box does require a pcb blueprint and the pcb blueprint is only obtainable through uh the Amadron tablet, which is also how we get into applied energistics as well. So we are got to take a quick detour there. You can as well, by the way, I believe, put multiple of these air compressors down uh, to increase the uh, the pressure faster. Right now, I think one's going to do us just fine. Okay, so we're actually very close now to 1.5 bars. We'll put 1.47, 1.48. Oh, if you press shift, you can actually see it uh, in the left there. That's interesting. You can see the like, gauge. But there we go, 1.5 bars, and you'll see that it made the PCB. Nice. So uh, for now, I'm going to take the charcoal out of there, and uh, you'll hear the, the gas escape as we break that. And uh, if we quickly put it back, we should retain some of the pressure. You'll see we are still at uh, 1.41 there, so we could make another set um, fairly quickly, I guess, uh, if we wanted to make another one. But uh, that is that quest complete. So the next one here says, at this point, I'm pretty sure you can build a PCB on your own. If not, you still have a manual to refer to. Craft a PCB. So going forward, chat, if we're going to progress on here, we need to get this tablet here. Um, it says, some technology is simply unobtainable on this wasteland. So don't be afraid of spending your money. That is, if you have any, craft an Amadron tablet. Amadron tablet. So this guy right here requires a bunch of gray plastic as well as a GPS tool and an air canister. The GPS tool is more plastic with a diamond, a glass pane, and a redstone. And then the air canister is a pressurized tube, some compressed steel, and some redstone. So... We actually have what it takes already to make the air canister. That's easy enough. I will bookmark this, and I'll also unbookmark basically everything over on this side now because we've made most of it. I am fairly certain, chat, that we're also going to have to get one of these guys, the charging station, to actually charge up the tablet. This uh, allows you basically to transfer pressure from uh, things like the uh, the air pressurizer that we have over there into uh, the Amadron tablet, which is going to allow us to, uh, to get what we need for the uh, the UV light box. Uh, while we wait for that to smelt up, we need, what, seven gray plastic? Let's go see if we have what it takes to make that. I don't know what uh, colors are required in making gray. But we'll see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. And then what was it, four red? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Nice. All right, so it seems like we did have more than enough uh, dye in there. It looks like you don't really need that much dye per craft, which is very nice indeed, and, and should make getting this guy quite a bit easier. So uh, a redstone torch is, of course, nice and easy to make, as is a diamond, and then one, two, three, four, uh, five, and six glass does get us what we need for the glass pins. And at that point, chat, I think we're basically there, right? We are, nice. That is that quest complete, and that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So the only thing left now is to make the charging station, which, again, really doesn't look too difficult here. We've still got three pressure tubes left so we're more than good enough on that front our clay should have smelted up by now it has indeed and so back over here that should also be the charging station done nice 
So now, chat, over here, we're going to move this guy, which is going to release some uh, steam there, but that's okay. We can repressurize that in the future. And I'm going to move away from that just so I don't have to listen to it, uh, it hissing away at me. Um, but, but for now, all we're going to do is we're going to put down the older air compressor. We're going to have a pipe coming out of the back of it, which is this side. And then we're going to connect that up to the charging station, which again, I think goes down like that. That should connect up. And then if we put the tablet in, like so, and we put some fuel in over here, that should begin charging the tablet up and should allow us to actually uh, begin using the tablet for um, buying things. It's essentially a shop that works via drones. It's a little weird, but uh, we'll let it fill up with some uh, some pressure here. I don't know if it needs to be... Uh, how, like how full it needs to be in order for it to uh, to actually work. But uh, if we, for example, look at uh, this guy, the PCB blueprint, which is what we need next. This is acquired via the tablet by trading eight emeralds for one PCB blueprint. Now, as of right now, we actually don't have any emeralds, but we can get them via the same trading mechanism. For example, we can trade five buckets of oil for one emerald, less than ideal. Uh, we could trade four buckets of diesel for one emerald, a little bit better because we have diesel right now that we're not using. Uh, but there are also quests like paper, leather, and potatoes, which seem a lot more appealing, as well as things like coal, which also seem appealing because for us, uh, those are basically just uh, quests that take some of our mana now that we have that uh, conjuring catalyst. Um, but then again, we also have sand. And the fact that we can turn, uh, turn paper into emeralds via the use of sand seems uh, very, very enticing. So I don't think it has to be fully charged here, chat, to actually work. If we right-click here, let's see. In here, if we have coal, can we trade this? It says, vendor is selling one emerald for 18 coal. I would like this trade here, please. The item is used to order item slash fluids, similar to a villager trading, except item slash fluid are picked and delivered via drones, which is way more awesome than villagers. A pickup slash drop-off location must be specified by right-clicking an inventory with a tank and or tablet. I see. Okay, so we need some uh, inventories here. I think a uh, chest or two will work. So if we put down a chest and if we right click it with this or shift right click it, item providing location. Okay. If I put my call in there, can I then complete the trade for call? I can. So now if I click this, how does one Interaction, add one, right click, so add one, right click. Ah, I see. So we can right click to, right, I see, okay. So you right click to increase the number that you want. So for now, let's say one, and then place order. That should send a drone. You can see it coming in. It should collect the uh, the call. And um, I assume another drone is going to come. Bringing in our emeralds. It is, yeah. Look at that. He's, he's holding it, chat. Look at that. Nice. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we essentially need to do that seven more times so that we can... Oh, no. I've, uh, we've overloaded the pressure here, chat. Let me turn that off. Um, do be careful. You can over overpressurize things here. So you want to take your fuel out when you're not, use, uh, when you're not using it. But... Um, we could do this also for our presses. Like, to get into Applied Energistics, we need presses. And I believe the presses are purchasable, yeah, with even more emeralds. So we need to get, you know, 32 of them, I guess, if we want to get the Calculation, Engineering, Silicon, and Logic Press. All of which we are going to need if we want to set up a, uh, an effective uh, Applied Energistics 2 system. For now, though, I'm just thinking about what the best option for us is here. I don't see the paper trades. You can go to uh, custom player trades. So I think what you can do is, you like, we, we are playing on a server. You can trade with other players, I believe. If they want to sell certain things, you can use this as a way of trading people, uh, trading with people. The eight gold is an interesting one. Yeah, for sure. Like, we can trade eight gold to one emerald. Uh, that would mean that we need, what, like, 56 gold, though, to get uh, seven more, which is less than ideal. I am kind of just thinking that we might try and get as much coal as we can using the, uh, the mana that we have. And there we go, seven emeralds. Nice. So we now have the uh, the eight required. So once again, we do have to uh, go and trade here, I guess. We'll put the eight emeralds in like so. And then now we can go ahead and request the old uh, PCB blueprint. Once again, place order. Not enough pressure. Okay, so now we do need more pressure to uh, continue to allow this to work. Oh, we got it. 
Okay. It did say not enough um, pressure, but it did work. The, the drones did bring us the PCB. All right, nice. So we have the PCB blueprint now, which is used to make the UV light box. That being this guy right here. Uh, this requires, you guessed it, yet more compressed steel, which thankfully we have. One more pressure tube, and then three redstone lamps, which requires 12 glowstone and 12 redstone. Okay, that seems very doable, chat. How much glowstone do we have? We have got 56. Nice. So that should be more than enough to do something like this. And then something like this. And then finally, something a little bit like this. Nice. Now, I'm fairly certain, much like all of the other machines from Pneumatic Craft, this does also require pressure. However, unfortunately, you have to place it down this way. There we go. Uh, so that's going to start filling up. And now we can put the PCB into the UV light box. And that's going to start uh, kind of filling up this bar here. Once we have a full PCB, we have to drop it in etching acid in order to get this um, actual PCB. If we look in JI here, you'll see that we can uh, turn the empty PCB into an empty PCB without a bar. And then from there, we can drop that into etching acid to create an unassembled PCB, which we can then use, finally chat, in the making of printed circuit boards, which we can then use in the making of actual machines. So right now we're just making the one, but it's probably going to be worth our time, maybe in the next stream, just making like a bunch of these, See if we can make, seeing if we can make, you know, maybe like 10 or 20 PCBs get them all ready, and that'll allow us to hopefully just make a bunch of, you know, machine chassis as and when we want, which will allow us to make a bunch of machines going forward, uh, just so we don't have to keep doing this, you know, over and over and over again. While we wait for that to uh, do its thing, let's have a look at uh, the etching acid. So the etching acid, I believe, is also made in the uh, pressure chamber. It is indeed. It requires two rotten flesh and one bucket of water, which actually seems pretty doable. Rotten flesh we have, a bucket we can make, and water we can generate using our, uh, our rod of the seas here. Good stuff. And so as soon as the, the light box is done, we'll move the, uh, the air compressor back over to the pressure chamber. I'm hoping this doesn't take too long. I think it is going to get faster as the, uh, the pressure increases here. You'll see the bar there is going up. And you'll see right now the etch success chance is going up. So the idea here is uh, that we could take this out now and throw it into etching acid, uh, but there's only a 20% chance that the etch would be successful. Uh, there's like a 80% chance that we just fail and don't get anything usable out of it. So the longer you leave this in here, the higher the chance that it succeeds when you drop it in the etching acid. So that's why we have to go through the UV light box. But uh, once that's done, chat, we are basically, that's basically everything pneumatic craft related that we have to do in order to progress here. And we can finally start looking at, you know, getting into some applied energetics, getting into some better machines. And of course, most importantly of all, I think right now, getting into some better, uh, better power sources uh, much more easily as well. So this is very slow. We're currently closing in on 95% on the etching chance. It would also appear that it gets slower. Like as you get closer to 100, the, the, the etch success chance goes up slower and slower. So I'm going to take it out of 95. And we're going to roll the dice a little bit here, chat. With a 95% success chance, I'm, I'm fairly confident in our ability to get a, uh, an actual PCB here. So once again, back over... Oh, we need a, another pressure pipe, actually. We don't have any left over. Let me go and grab the one right here. All we should have to do now is take this old pipe and uh, and throw it down over here. So we're going to put down the pressure tube. We're going to put down the air compressor. We're going to once again begin uh, building up on, uh, on the old air pressure. There we go. Uh, over here, we're going to break in. We're going to drop in a bucket of water as well as two rotten flesh, like so. And hopefully, Chet, once that gets up to... One bar, that should generate etching acid. And if I'm not mistaken, the etching acid is reusable. You don't have to make a new one every time. Unfortunately, I do see, having, having read this very quickly here, that it does mention the, the words five minutes. So it says, place the etching acid in the world and throw an empty PCB that has been exposed in a UV light box. After five minutes, an unassembled PCB will be produced. Five minutes, chat. Oh my goodness. So we are going to have to uh, do this quite a bit going forward. And I believe you can make these in bulk so we can make a bunch of empty PCBs and throw them all in um, at once to really you know speed this up so that after five minutes, we get like 20 of them. 
which I think is what we might do in the next stream. I might make a bunch of these between streams. And the next time we'll come back and make a bunch of them. But uh, I think definitely at some point going forward, we are going to want to automate this so that we don't have to do this manually every time and we can just, uh, you know, request them. We should get our first etching bucket here very shortly. Any minute now. There it is. Beautiful. All right. Good stuff. So we do now have the etching acid and essentially all we have to do is just put that in the ground and drop in uh, the PCB and then just wait for five minutes. After five minutes, that will become a, um, a full PCB and complete this quest. Uh, for now, I'm going to pick it up. Um, we do etching process 3%, so we, you can pick it up partway through and keep going. Uh, for now, I'm going to pick it up, though. I think, chat, that's probably where we're going to wrap things up for today. Next time, I'll come back. Between streams, I'll let this like do its thing. I'll put it in, and I'll take it back out at like 98%, so we can finish it off uh, in the next stream. But uh, next time, we'll come back. We'll look at maybe getting into Applied Energistics 2, because that, that's really where I want to go first. Um, I won't really want to get a better storage solution, so we can finally, uh, once and for all, and to get rid of all of these uh, chests over here. Uh, we can also hook up our storage door system to our applied energistic system uh, to give us access to all of the stuff that's already in all of these storage drawers, which is going to be super nice. Uh, of course, as I've been saying for a little while now, we can get better power and uh, eventually look at getting better machines as well. But for now, guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the stream and you want to see more in the future, you can go ahead and hit follow to get notified when I go live.